As we move on in Mark, we're talking about trouble is coming. You know, we can get really depressed about trouble. Here's one of the things right now. <laughs> I even look at the, I, I don't read the paper much anymore. I, I get my news off the internet. I don't know about the rest of it. The paper was getting expensive. I had a, a gentleman the other night that had some mental problems. He really wasn't sick. He was mainly in the hospital for his mental problems. He said, now I'm bored. Can't you get a paper around here for me somewhere? So I asked permission. I went down to the gift shop to buy him a newspaper. And a Columbus dispatch at the gift shop at the hospital was $3. It was not Sunday. It was a regular day. So I don't get the paper anymore. I kind of miss it, but I get the majority of what I need to on the internet. But one of the things is when I read it, sometimes I know I felt a little bit more depressed. Becky still gets it. I asked her if I could use one of her issues, and she brought me Thursday's paper, and the headline is, Governor Signs Gas Tax Increase. Bless his heart. Isn't that sweet? So, you know, it's the time of year when you want to drive more places and do more fun stuff, and guess what? You're going to pay more to go. You know, if you go through this thing, I bet there's a lot more cheery stuff in here. Wow, Ohio's one of the worst states in the U.S. health rank. Okay. Yeah, there's just all kinds of good stuff in here, isn't there? Get y'all happy. You want to get positive in the morning? Get out your newspaper and read it because it gets fired up and, and, you know, it can give you bad feelings about what's going on with the world. What's happening in the world? What's going on with the world? How soon is the world going to end? Because we got global warming, folks. Global warming, and it's all melting, and everybody's going to drown, and it's really awful. And you know what? There's about to be a civil war in America. Did you know that? And pretty soon, everybody's going to be shooting on your front lawn. And if you didn't know it, both Russia and Iraq, their number one bomb sites to nuke are Sunbury, Ohio. <laughs> And they've got that down. They've got the site planned in because Sunbury is the very heart of the American culture. And if they can take out Sunbury, they can put an end to this dreadful democracy. You know, that's worth staying up at night and sleeping. You know what? The Democrats and the Republicans both want you dead. And they plan that together every day. They want all your money, and they want you dead. And you know what? I'm telling you right now, if you're not up at night worrying about this, there's something wrong with you. You need to spend more time laying awake saying, what's Trump doing now? He was really scary the other day. I saw a picture of him and Nancy at the bowling alley in the White House planning it all together. Mrs. Pelosi had a great big smile on her face and her hands. Her fingers were going through his hand. <laughs> and you know, whew, I'm shaking just talking about it. It's scary. When we get like that, watching the TV news can raise our blood pressure through the roof. We can get scared to death. Because all this stuff's going on, and we know what's going to happen. We know what kind of effect it's going to be on our kids. You know, I'm seven or eight years old. I can remember things from seven or eight years old. And I remember my grandparents and my parents saying, what kind of world is Danny going to grow up in? Now I sit around thinking about what kind of world is my kids going to grow up in? But you want to know something? I'm pretty sure that my grandparents' parents used to say about the time of the Civil War, for my granddaddy Arthur had just finished and reconstruction was going on. What kind of world is our son Harry that he grew up in? Right? Because we freak out. Because we don't remember who's in charge. So we can get totally blown away about what we think is going to happen. But you know what? Jesus told us what is going to happen. I put my trust in Jesus. Oh, yeah? Yes. If I put my trust in Jesus, I believe that he's the Son of God. I believe that he's the Creator. I know that I know he knows everything that has happened, everything that is happening now, and everything that is going to happen. 
And when he tells me what to expect, I'm kind of stupid if I don't pay attention to that. Oh yeah? It's just kind of sad. And if I lay awake at night in bed thinking he's not in charge and he's not in control, there's something wrong with that picture. But the devil loves us to worry, doesn't he? You know? He loves us to worry. He loves us to sit and not enjoy our life. Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. And you know what? I just want you to picture yourself that you're standing here. And Jesus is standing here. And Jesus looks you right in the face and says, don't worry about tomorrow. And the devil elbows you in the ribs because <laughs> you believe this guy. Too many wood chips from his carpenter's day up his nose. You must believe that. Because when Jesus says, don't worry, what do we do? We get all scared. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What Jesus told us. The trouble is coming and how we're going to handle it. And before we go into God's word, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we just thank you so much that you told us the truth of what life is going to be like. And Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would be with us. As we get scared about these tough times, to remind us with your Holy Spirit that you're in charge. You're in control. And, and the thing that we struggle with the most, the earth is a temporary. This is a temporary home that we're to enjoy and love you and love other people, but that our eternity is with you. And for us not to grasp so tightly to these things or worry so much about these things, that it's just the pains of an earth that is so filled with sin. But Lord, you've conquered sin and you're bringing us to be with you. And help us to be calm and understand this and to deal with it better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bad things happen. Wars happen. Wars have always happened. They're always going to happen. There's been a bunch of wars in my life since I was born. And they will continue to happen. And, you know, I, I work on a floor with a bunch of people from Africa. A bunch of the nurses have all came to the United States and become citizens, and they're from Africa. And can I tell you something? We don't know war. Do you know that? We think we know war because we can talk about the big one. We can talk about Vietnam. We can even talk about Iraq. Let me tell you, those people have wars going on around them every day. That's why we came to America. Different people rise up and get more guns and go to wars. What we call like street wars in New York City between gangs are actually wars with more people down in Africa. And they're going at each other all the time about that stuff. And, the, and, and, and there's wars and there's rumors of wars and what's going to happen. And, you know, we got this guy over in North Korea that sits there and he's got his red switch on a pole to set off his nukes. And he sits in the back of the room and he plays ring toss with him. I hate that right now, kill him. You know? And we can get all worried about that. And then there's political crime. Political crime is new. Jesus never had to deal with anything going on in politics. You know, people like Pilate and all the Caesars, they were great guys. They didn't do anything like these American politicians. <laughs> the government was pure back then. It could be trusted. But you know what? We worry sick about politics. Right? If I hear one more word about who's going to run in 2020, more important to me that Jesus comes back before 2020. Oh, yeah? yeah? You know, I mean, can you imagine all the prayers that Jesus has heard in his, his, his life? I mean, his existence from people that after he created us. All these prayers that people come to on their knees and knees. And now the new prayer is, Lord Jesus, please come soon before I have to watch a 2020 campaign commercial. I don't want to see it. I want to see you. But you know why people are? Politics is always going to be politics. And then we see starvation. Starvation is a really hard one for me. It's tough to figure out starvation in the United States of America. We have so much. How many of you here have ever worked in fast food? Raise your hand. Okay. 
one of the things, if you've never worked in fast food that you miss out on, is my first fast food experience was famous recipe fried chicken. And I would cook a uh, bucket of chicken or so, you know, have it on the tray, and nobody would commit over at 9.30. And so I went in and I said, hey, I met a couple of guys in the fire department and they would appreciate if at night, we, instead of throwing all this stuff in the trash, we would take it to the fire department. And on the nights I closed, I personally delivered it. I took anything that was left over to the fire department. The owner found out what he was doing it. He almost wrote me out. The fire department wants this stuff, they come and buy it. We don't give our stuff away. Now I'm going to tell you something. How many fast food people that raise, raise your hand again if you worked in fast food? How many of you threw away food at, at the end of the night? We just talk, we, we have people that are homeless, they can't eat. We throw away food in the name of capitalism. Oh yeah? If they want it, they can come in and buy it. We'd rather throw it away than give it away for free. And so what we see is when we see war and we see political crime and we see starvation, these things are all because of sin. War is usually because I want your land. I don't like something that you did. We were joking this morning in Sunday school that in the Middle East, those people remember something that somebody did to offend somebody's family 14,000 years ago. And they're still mad about it. And then political crime, it's all about people who want more and want power. and want to be in charge. And so they do all of these different things because they want to further themselves, which is sin. And then starvation. So many people with so much food. And yet, I want to make money out of it. So I don't care. And all of this is because people are selfish. And selfishness is because of sin. And Jesus says in Mark 13, 1 through 2, as Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, look at these beautiful stones and wonderful buildings. And Jesus replied, Do you not see these huge buildings? They will certainly be torn down. Not one stone will be left in place. The Jews were very proud of the temple. When Solomon built the temple and God directed that, the Jews were so proud of that. It was like the crowning achievement of Israel, that they had made it. They were so focused, supposedly, on their God, that the highlight achievement of their country was to build the living place for their God. Now, they bragged about that and everything, but they truly didn't worship Him with their hearts, did they? Because we know how they acted, how they lived, that they loved to look at the building, to walk by and say, look what we achieved, look what we did. And they, they even brag about it to Jesus, even his disciples. They brag about it all the time. But Jesus shocks them with a prophecy that in 73, 74 years, Rome was going to come and smash it to the ground. Smash it. Get rid of it. Take it away. Knock it down. What do you mean? You can't. Rome can't do that. He didn't say Rome. He just said they don't. They can't do that. God, nobody can touch that. God built that. God directed us how to do that. He's not going to let anything do it. But you know what? God never thought it would be something that came before God. You know, we still see that today, right? You still see that today. You see people that they'll think a hundred times more about the church building than God. Again, yeah. you ever heard people like that? I saw a cartoon once by a wonderful minister who has the ability to draw cartoons. It showed a room, there was a meeting room full of people, and they were all beat up, and their hair was messed up, and there was blood everywhere. And it said, the board had a meeting on what color to paint the nursery. Okay? That stuff happens, doesn't it? And Jesus said, it, it's going to all be gone. But how bad can it get? What's going to happen to America? What's, the, what's our future? What's going to happen? And, and, and you go to a restaurant, if you go with a group and listen to people talk, watch how long it takes to get to, to politics. 
Okay, I had, a, I had a guy this week, you guys know I'm not political at all, but I had a guy in the hospital this week who is hardcore Democrat guy, and he 24 hours a day watched CNN. And the more they talk about Trump, the higher his blood pressure would be. <laughs> so all his kids uh, were there to see him last night. And I went into his room and I said, sir, that paperwork that you wanted to send more money to the Trump campaign's here. And uh, his kid, his kids just broke out laughing. They were just rolling on the floor. He looked at me and he said, it's one of them idiot preacher Republicans. And uh, I said, I told you, I'm not anything. And he just laughed and he held with me. But anyway, you know, if you go places and hear people talk about the stuff they're scared to death, Scared to death about what's going to happen in our country. You turn on the TV and you watch the news. There's so many good things going on out in the community. So many good things. And how often do you see that reported? Might be in a little quick blur. But you know, you see the, the bad stuff that's going on constantly. And Jesus tells us two things that we need to do. He says, don't be deceived. Jesus says, don't be deceived. That's very, very important. You know, the church gets easily deceived. It does. And the reason why the church gets deceived goes right there with our Bible literacy. So few people have actually read the Word of God and read it over and over and realize that it's living. It's not just a book. It's a living thing. And, and, and we're to stay in it constantly. And, and we get away from it. We don't do it. And when we get away from the Bible, and we don't know the Bible, we're easily deceived. Sometimes it's not easy staying up on your Bible. I'm redoing my read through the Bible. And some of you will get this right away. And some of you will have to explain it to you. But I, I, I got home from work last night. And I was just totally exhausted. And my son Nathan dropped by to visit with me. And I was so glad to see him and Jess. And they left last night about 1.30, 20 till 2. And I'm like, bad, bad, bad. And I go in to lay down and read my Bible. And I know how tired I'm going to be this morning. And guess what chapter of my Bible that I was on when I went to sleep last night? The 118th Psalm. So that means this morning I was going to wake up to the 119th Psalm. Oh, yeah? And I see the reason most of you are laughing. The 119th Psalm is the longest book of the Bible. It is five pages long. Okay? See what I did? I said, God help me. And I read 119 last night. And this morning I got up feeling guilty and did 120, 121, and 122. It's not easy sometimes to be the Lord God, but if you're not, you're going to be deceived. And the second thing he says is don't be discouraged. Do you get discouraged when you watch the news? Oh yeah? You see things are happening? You see what people are doing to each other? And it's really hard for us to go through and believe that people can treat each other like that. And that people can be that selfish and not caring. Mark 13, 3 through 8. Later, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives across from the temple, Peter, James, and John Andrew came to him in private. They asked, when will these things happen? What will be the sign that they are about to take place? And Jesus answered, watch out. Don't let anyone fool you. Many will come and claim to be me. They will use my name and fool many people. When you hear about wars and threats of wars, don't be afraid. Things will have to happen first, but that isn't the end. Nations and kingdoms will go to war against each other. There will be earthquakes in many places and people will starve to death. But this is just the beginning of troubles. You know, there will be false teachers. False teachers. How do you tell a false teacher if your minister that you're kind of interested in is living in a $14 million home? You might want to think a couple times. I was totally disgusted this week. I really had a tough time on Monday. See, I don't know her name, but this lady started a church down in South Carolina. And it grew to like 15 or 20,000, and they found out she was doing all kinds of stuff, and the government started going after. So she hightailed it and put a new guy in. And she went and started a new church in San Jose, California, hoping people would forget about her. So now the new guy is getting in trouble. He just took $300,000 out of the building fund to 
about his wife, a Lamborghini, for their anniversary. Perhaps some of you know recently you need to be worried about your preacher. Just a few weeks ago from my wreck, I purchased a silver Lamborghini. It's out there in the parking lot. And uh, the press is going after him. It's in Greenville, South Carolina. The Greenville newspaper is going after him like crazy. They're going after him and what him and his wife are doing and some other financial things they found out about. They're living in like a five or six million dollar home in Greenville. So she goes in to preach and as she's preaching her sermon, she stops and she points and she said, Greenville Gazette, there's a knife in my purse and I will cut you. I've done it before and I'll do it again. 15,000 born-again followers stand up and give her a standing ovation. Did that depress you to start your day in the office on Monday? Because I'm going to tell you something. How many non-believers watch that? How many people who think the church is a sham and a bunch of garbage watch that on the news? What do you think the odds are that they're going to get up and go to church today? Because they're afraid the preacher might cut them. I got a baseball bat. It's ridiculous. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Rumors of war are going to happen. People are selfish. Don't be deceived. It's the end of the world. The end of the world is when you're standing with Jesus. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Earthquakes are going to happen. They're going to happen. It's just part of how this world goes. It doesn't mean that the next one means the whole world's going to crack in half. Don't be deceived. Mark 13, 9 through 2. Or 9 through 12, excuse me. 9 through 2 wouldn't make much sense. Be on your guard. You'll be taken to courts and beaten with whips in their meeting places. And because of me, you have to stand before rulers and kings to tell about your faith. Before the end comes, the good news must be preached to all nations. When you are arrested, don't worry about what you will say. You will be given the right words when the time comes. But you will not really be the one speaking. Your words will come from the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters will betray each other and have each other put to death. Parents will betray their own children. The children will turn against their parents and have them killed, arrested for belief. We see that in the world all over today, don't we? People were arrested and killed because they gave their life to Christ. They're trying to spread a loving message. We hear that they die, murdered for their faith. We know that we personally are abused and made fun of because of our faith. You know, people will belittle us and think we're stupid because we believe these words. That's not a surprise. Jesus told us it was going to be like this. But that's where sin would go. But you know what he said? Don't be discouraged. Well, it's really hard not to be discouraged, Lord. Because this is Excuse me, scary stuff. Does this mean we're having time in the United States of America where a church is going to be a place where we're going to meet in our homes hiding? Maybe. Maybe. There's no pri there's no there's no prophecy of the safe haven in the United States. Does everybody understand that? We don't know, but let me ask you something. If the government came on TV tomorrow, and said that it was illegal to worship Jesus Christ, would it change your faith at all? Would you stop meeting together? Would you stop trying to reach other people for Jesus? Would you stop talking about it? If you talked about it, knowing that you might die, would you continue to talk about it? Because see, that's the followers that he wants. The people that, if we know if anybody was doing anything to our kids, what would we do? Can anything stop you from getting your child from you? People with guns, knives, anything? Anything can stop you from getting your kids if they need you? Taking care of your spouse? What would you do for Jesus? 
Mark 13, 13. Everyone will hate you because of me. But if you keep on being faithful right to the end, you will be saved. You see, the promise of Jesus, you will be saved. That's our promise. We will be saved. There is no fear in serving Jesus. There is no fear what the world has to bring. We don't have to sit around and say, what kind of place is this going to be for our kids? You know what? Our kids are going to have a tougher time than we do. Because we have a tougher time than our parents. Our parents have a tougher time than their parents. Right? When was the last time anybody had an easy time? How would you like to move to the Sun Barrier in 1780? You think it was a real nice place to live? I heard rumors the grill wasn't even open. <laughs> hard times. People die of colds. You think you got a normal cold. You die. People dehydrated from the flu. They die. People die from just they got scared if you got a fever. Now we get a fever. We drop a couple of Advil. No, and then in two hours we drop a couple of Tylenol. Oh yeah? They die. But we let it get us down because we don't trust that he will be saved. But how can we be saved? In those days, Mark 13, 24 through 26, right after that time of suffering, the sun will become dark, and the moon will be no longer, will no longer shine. The stars will fall, and the powers in the sky will be shaken. Then the Son of Man will be seen coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He will send his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the earth. Jesus will return. Jesus will return for all of us. Some of us may die. Before then, we'll go to be with him. Some of us may live until he comes. We don't, we don't know. I, I, I tell this story often. Granddad was born in 1899. That was just fascinating talking to him. And he was blessed to live to be 97 years old. And Granddad would tell you that based on everything he's seen on the news every day, he knew that Jesus would be here before he died. And he was wrong. And the Bible says that nobody has that time. Nobody knows. But he based it on the fact that the things that he saw in the news, the things that he got nervous about, the things that he got worried about, and you know, those things have always been there. But Jesus will return. <coughs> it's the promise. It's the prophecy. We see the prophecies fulfilled. But we don't need to worry so much. Because we can relax understanding that he is in control. And it helps us to know he's in control. To read this, because you know all the things that you see that happen? He told about it before it happened, didn't he? And the amazing accuracy? That helps us to understand that he's in control. He is in the maker. He is the maker. So what should it help us? Can we stand strong in our faith? Can we stand strong in our faith? Can we understand that we don't need to work? We don't need to, to be afraid. The same God that says, Thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not lie, says, Thou shalt not worry. Thou shalt not be afraid. We have to learn to put our confidence in Him, to believe that that's true. And in that way, we can learn to enjoy our lives more. Learn to be more loving and caring because worry will drain the love and caring right out of you. Oh, yeah? If you would like to come forward to that and pray, follow him, to express that confidence in him, that you know, I'm going to turn my life over to you because you're going to take care of me. We ask that you come forward to that.